I have that, that's, uh, we call it a poster presentation. On that one, you can see the data more clear. So anybody you want to see the data, you can take a look at it, OK? All right, uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, wind energy. Here is, whoever doesn't know what is wind energy, that's the wind turbine. And we have two types. We have onshore, the ones on the air, and uh, offshore, the ones in the water. Go ahead. So wind energy, that's the actual growth of wind energy around the world. So what I'm trying to say is maybe in the next 20 years, everybody going to be using wind energy. It's what we do. Study the LC is a life cycle analysis. Like we start from extraction of all the raw material to the manufacturing production, and uh, we calculate all type of emissions, <coughs> energy used to compare with coal, other power to see which one is the best. And then we give it to you guys. But uh, what I'm trying to do today is I will inform you guys first what the scientists or the engineers hide from you. OK, they, they tell you, oh, that's a renewable energy, emission free. And you guys are happy, right? It's emission free. But they don't tell you what, it's emission free when we implant it. Like, after the erection, it's emission free. But what about the manufacturing process? Is that emission free? No. We have to use a, a certain type of uh, energy in the manufacturing. We can use coal as electricity. We can use, uh, I call it, hydro, uh, hydropower as a source of energy in those manufacturing, manu uh, manufacturing companies to go ahead and now uh, um, build or manufacture the blades, the rotors, the nacelles. So all of those are not emission free. All right, here is the life cycle assessment of a wind power. That's the way it goes. We go from what? Raw material acquisition. We have uh, recently, like uh, 10 years ago, they implanted one, the wind farm in uh, Alberta, Canada. But most of the part to build the, uh, the wind turbine is not only coming from Canada. Like coal can come from Africa, aluminum from Asia. So we have a certain type of what? Transport. During the extraction of the raw material, we have emissions. And we have to use energy. So we're using energy to get energy. But what we study most on that, uh, on the energy base, it's uh, are we gaining or are we losing? So at the end, we calculate the net energy and the payback time. So from that, you're going to get the raw material. You're going to transport it to the vendor subcomponent and the vendor. So you're going to transport it again until it's like uh, the path to get to erect a wind turbine. So, when we study the life cycle assessment of the wind turbine, we come up to see that the highest emission phase is the transportation phase. Because we transport a lot. When you transport something that is uh, emitting uh, uh, carbon dioxide from Africa to United States, how much emission are we getting? Are we losing? It's a big issue. And also, during the production phase, when we manufacture the stuff, we, we, uh, there is emissions too. All right, here is uh, the highest emission phase. That's a diagram. So you see that the manufacturing phase, we use a lot of energy. That energy can be what? Diesel. Can be all type of petroleum base can be adult uh, power, can be coal. So we have to take each specific one and study them in order for us to come up with a conclusion and see either wind turbine is 
the best renewable energy we have or hydropower or biofuels. Whichever one we come up to conclude, that's what we present to the uh, people that funding for the research. Good. All right, here is a, a comparison between uh, the wind uh, energy. You see, we have CH nuclear power, hydroplane, multi crystalline, monocrystalline, amorphous. All of those are a type of source of energy we use, like solar energy. When we use solar energy, we have the multi crystalline, we have monocrystalline, all of those in the uh, solar energy plates that we buy and put on top of the roof. So compared to all of those, that one is the wind plant. So the wind plant is like uh, emission free compared to all of those. Coal is the biggest one. But we still use the coal. Okay. All right, here it's uh, a study of we use coal as a base energy, like a source of energy to, for the extraction of the raw material, for the manufacturing process. For the company, we use coal as a source of energy. To, we're going to convert that into electricity and use it for the machines and stuff like that to produce all the plates. So here, it's, it's not. You cannot see clearly, but the red one, it's when you use coal. So coal is the highest one, the most dangerous uh, factor of uh, emissions we have. But the other ones, this one is for hydropower. So in this one, we're going to choose what? Hydropower. And we're going to take hydropower and go and uh, do a life cycle assessment between the hydropower and the wind plant. And we're gonna get a, a a result. Okay, here is the environmental impacts. No, but I don't know. Most of you don't know that the emissions we get from winter rain. You can get a CO2 emissions. They will tell you that it's CO2 emission. But are they gonna tell you that? When they say they combine to the HO2, they give you something else. No, most dangerous than the CO2 emissions. So we have the radiation. When we trans on the transportation phase, we have what? Acidification and uh, eutrophication, ecotoxicity, ozone layers, radiation, climate change, respiratory inorganics. That is most dangerous for human beings. And uh, we have carcinogens and uh, respiratory organics. So all of those are what? A kind of uh, bad stuff, like uh, the em a bad stuff that the emission will cause if we don't capture it. But go to next. OK, now is where we come up. Actually, in the world, people are fighting either what? Wind energy is the best, other power. So, you defend the wind energy, they call you, engineers call you wind, the wind guy. Yeah. You defending hydro power, they call you the hydro power guy. So I was talking to a lady on the last presentation we have at the Hotel uh, Intercontinental. She said that they have a big project in England. So the people, they, uh, so the people they call ecosystem or whatever, they wanted to fight against, they're always fighting against what? wind energy, because they say the blades kill the birds. OK. The lady said that they went to find another system uh, by including the wind blades in the water. It's going to be like a hydropower, but it's going to give you the same one, emission free. And they still didn't want to do it. So the ones that are defending that are against the wind energy are the ones who own the hydropower company. <coughs> They open up the companies for something. They need to make money. They have come up with a new style. I need to go against you. I have invest billions. And I wanted to keep moving so I can keep making money. So it's a type of uh, fighting going on. And now the engineers, 
the wind guys came up with a system to capture the carbon. When there is an emission, they came up with a system to capture it so it won't go away and uh, uh, combine with some other emissions to create uh, carcinogens and stuff like that. So that's what we call what? the carbon capture techniques. And with that carbon capture techniques, it's not something that is efficient 100%, but 68% we capture. So it's when we, uh, after we use the carbon capture techniques and we conduct the life cycle analysis of the wind turbine since the extraction, we find that it's uh, the payback time for the, uh, the, the energy and the payback time for the emissions are less than one year. And all the wind turbines that you see, it's uh, built for 20 years. So the rest is going to be what? Emission free. And we're going to get all energy for not using, one, for not paying for anything. We have to do maintenance. That's a routine for everything, every machine we have. So, so I just wanted to let you guys, that's the carbon capture um, diagram for the hardcore, the lignite, and the natural gas. All right, does anybody have a question? That's the website is for Thank you, thank you.